The final item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 14643 in the name of Edward Mountain on the investigation into bullying claims at NHS Highland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Edward Mountain to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm in fact saddened that we're having this debate this afternoon. Firstly, because we shouldn't need to be having it. And secondly, it should have been dealt with when I first called on the First Minister to hold an independent inquiry into this issue in September. But I would like to thank those members of the Chamber and of opposing parties who have signed this motion uh, that was in my name, particularly David Stewart, Rhoda Grant, Monica Lennon, Liam MacArthur, Alex Cole Hamilton, and John Finney. Whilst no SNP MSP has supported the motion, I'm there confident that they believe, like I do, that there should be zero tolerance when it comes to bullying. Now, I'd like to welcome also, before I go into the substance of my debate, those who've come from the Highlands to listen to this debate, who are up there in the gallery. And I'd like to thank them for all the work they've done in bringing this to the attention of the Parliament. I'd also like to welcome those that are following this on BBC Live. There is a huge interest in this matter. Now, Presiding Officer, when I became elected in 2016, it was apparent to me there were significant issues within NHS Highland, not just with waiting times and poor financial performance, but there was something else, something I couldn't quite put my finger on, something that frankly made me feel very uncomfortable. Now, I believe, presiding officer, that the way an organisation treats those that they work with paints a good picture of the way they treat those that work for them. In 2016, the deep division between patients in Caithness and Skye and NHS Highland warned me something was seriously amiss. Those protesters felt ignored and that the Highland, NHS Highland had shown them an unbelievable level of arrogance, which is perhaps why over a thousand of them took to the streets in Caithness on a wet and windy afternoon in October of that year. And my concern grew further when doctors and nurses across the Highlands started to contact me, informing me of issues and passing on correspondence from NHS Highland. A trickle became a flood. Issues that should have been addressed with senior management, but they felt they were unable to do so because of the response they received. And that attitude manifested itself at board level. The huge turnover of non-executive board members in the last five years should have been a flag to the then health secretary but it wasn't. And what should have been an even bigger deafening klaxon to the health secretary was when the non-executive board passed the following motion on the 28th of August, 2017. And I read that motion. We feel the culture and leadership of the organization is a risk to our stated values and objective. Now that is from the board of NHS Highland. Now this motion was passed to the chair of NHS Highland, who subsequently denied he knew about it, and it was also passed to the Scottish Government. The result was a governance review, which condemned the executive management of NHS Highland. And I'm going to quote one paragraph of the report produced by John Brown, and it is, is as follows. And if you want to look it up, it's paragraph 430. The chair should consider externally facilitated support, such as mediation, to provide a safe and insecure environment for board members to meet with him and the chief executive to discuss recent concerns and for an agreed way forward to be found. Now one has to ask, what exactly was going on in the boardroom that made it an unsafe and insecure environment? Well, perhaps exactly what was going on elsewhere in NHS Highland. On Friday, a meeting organized by the GMB and whistleblowers was set up to discuss bullying. And we heard stories about what was going on. And I want to quote just one just one of the 100 plus that have been reported. And I quote, and this is from a lady, each time it got worse and worse, crying and begging my husband before a shift not to make me go in, and crying when I returned home. My bullying in the workplace got so bad that it affected my mental health. It was so bad that not only it affected me in the work, but also my home life and my life with my kids. Now this is from a healthcare professional doing her job, 
and she is not the only one. I have heard of other harrowing cases who have contacted me directly. I've been so concerned that on one occasion that I contacted the office of the Chief Executive of NHS Scotland to seek help as NHS Highland remained uncommunicative. But it doesn't stop there. There are patients across the Highland who feel let down, unable to raise the issues they want to because of the unpleasant reaction to the fact that, that some have received when they have the temerity to complain. Everything I have seen and heard has convinced me there is a bullying culture in NHS Highland, and it cannot be written off as gossip as the chair of the board tried to do on the 27th of July this year. It, to me, it is evident at every level, from the boardroom to the floor of the wards. You see it in the way NHS Highlands work with their own, with their patients, and with those who dare to question the service provision or management. And on the latter point, I would just make this point. Trust me, I know. On Friday, the Cabinet Secretary announced an independent review into bullying in NHS Highland, which I welcome. But I'm afraid that is just the start. The review will need to look back to identify where the culture of bullying emanated from. John Sturrock will need to speak to the staff and patients and board members, and this will take time. And I hope that during the course of this debate, the Cabinet Secretary can confirm who will be allowed to contribute to the review, that the review will look back for at least 10 years, that the review will cover what I will term as the coercion of staff by the projection of authority, which I believe goes on the whole time. And when it comes to reporting, I hope the Cabinet Secretary will confirm to me what early 2019 means, because time is sadly a luxury we don't have. We have to address this issue that is festering and I'm told has been around for over 10 years. We need to do it, Cabinet Secretary, for the staff, the patients and the victims in NHS Highland. Bullying has no place in any of our institutions and particularly not NHS Highland. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We move to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call Gail Ross to be followed by David Stewart. <clears throat> Thank you, President Officer. Bullying, discrimination, intimidation, victimisation, abuse, harassment. We teach our children from a young age that this behaviour is not acceptable in nursery and school. It's not acceptable in college and university. It's not acceptable in the workplace and it should not be acceptable full stop. When the news broke in the press that four clinicians had come forward to say that scores of health workers had been or felt they had been bullied at various NHS Highland establishments across the Highlands, there was quite rightly a condemnation of such behaviour. President Officer, I am not going to go into the detail of the allegations because for me, that is something for the investigation to explore. But what I will say is that any member of staff at NHS Highland that feels they have been bullied, no matter what shape that takes, must feel supported to come forward. I have met with staff locally, government officials, and spoken to the Cabinet Secretary about this. And on the 15th of November, I asked the government about an independent investigation. And the answer from the Cabinet Secretary was as follows, quote, the scale and scope of the allegations of bullying and the time span of these in NHS Highland is such that I need to understand the issues that appear to have led to a culture where these concerns cannot be raised or resolved satisfactorily by the board. To ensure all the issues can be raised and heard by those involved, I have commissioned an externally led independent review. This review will consider all the circumstances that have led to the allegations and make recommendations. My officials continue to hold discussions with NHS Highland staff and their representatives, and we will finalise the scope of the investigation during the week beginning the 19th of November and look to announce who will lead the independent investigation as soon as possible thereafter." End quote. Then on the 23rd of November, I asked who will be leading the review and what the scope of the review will be. The Cabinet Secretary answered, quote, I have asked John Sturrock QC to lead this independent review to explore the underlying issues and concerns that have led to allegations of bullying and harassment within NHS Highland. 
The review will include conversations with affected individuals, including current and former staff, the representatives, board members and health board management. The scope of the review will be to create a safe space for an individual and or collective concerns to be raised and discussed confidentially and with an independent and impartial third party. To understand what, if any, cultural issues have led to any bullying or harassment and a culture where such allegations apparently cannot be raised and responded to locally. And to identify proposals and recommendations for ways forward which help will ensure the culture within NHS Highland in future is open and transparent and perceived by all concerned in this way. The review will commence with initial meetings taking place before Christmas. A review report with proposals and recommendations for ways forward will be provided to the Scottish Government in early 2019. Separate to this independent review, the Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, Paul Gray, has today written to NHS Highland to offer an increased level of support to help them recover their financial position and strengthen internal governance. This will raise Highland to stage four in the board escalation framework. Additional support will take the form of a support team led by a transformation director who will assist the board in planning and delivering the improvement initiatives necessary to restore the board to financial balance." End quote. I believe it's important to get that on the official record. The government are taking this seriously and they have answered calls for an independent investigation. The board are being given extra guidance and assistance. But I'll end, President Officer, with two pleas. Firstly, a plea to NHS Highland to commit to listen and act on the evidence received. And secondly, a plea to all NHS staff that are considering coming forward with any information about anyone. Please feel safe and supported to do so because you are the front line and the backbone of our NHS. We appreciate everything that you do and we need you to be healthy and happy so that we can be too. Thank you. David Stewart, followed by John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and could I congratulate Edward Mountain for securing this evening's debate and all his campaign work around bullying within NHS Highland. And could I also warmly welcome to the gallery NHS Highland staff, uh, past uh, and present. Um, as with Edward Mountain, on Friday I attended an important but emotionally challenging event organised by the GMB doctors and whistleblowers on bullying. Over 60 people attended and over 140 statements from victims have already been taken. One account of the bullying particularly struck me and I quote, you raise a bullying and a harassment case and yet every step of the way you're on trial. Your character is attacked, you're then subjected to mockery and someone even writes that you're schizophrenic in their statement. Every step of the way you're treated like you've done something wrong. You start to doubt yourself and even your own character. You're isolated. You cannot talk to anyone about it, but you know everyone knows. Your manager tells you it's your fault, and in fact it is you, and you should lose your job, your MMC license, and your liberty. Suddenly you're very afraid. What's just happened here? You go off sick, and you are. You're beside yourself. How could this have happened? You go from being bullied and trying to report it to suddenly you are the problem. Your family don't know what to do. You're seeing the doctors every few days. You think about taking your own life. Your family and partner stay with you. They are scared to leave you alone. They don't talk about it even now. Presiding officer, the staff I met before and after the above event had all worked for NHS Highland at some stage in their careers. In addition, as with Edward Mountain, I had spoken to several former board non-executives over the last year and also received many phone calls and emails from concerned staff in administration, frontline nursing and GP practices. It seemed to me that there was an underlying toxic culture of bullying. This clearly was having an effect on staff morale and emotional health. And the wider issue to me was the possible effect this was having on the credibility of NHS Highland and its ability to recruit and retain staff. It's also difficult to measure the effect that this had on patients, but surely this has had an impact. So for that reason, I do welcome the Cabinet Secretary's written answer on Friday, which with perfect timing, coincided with the uh, bullying conference that I and my colleagues were attending. 
And like Edward Mountain, I'd also been calling for an independent QC-led review, and I welcome the terms of the review to include current and formal staff. Could the Cabinet Secretary or the Minister in their closing speeches confirm whether there's any time limit in respect to formal staff in terms of when they left? And what about patients? If they've witnessed or experienced bullying among NHS staff, will that be considered by the static review? Will the findings be published in full? And will the Health and Sport Committee have a role in the proceedings? Could I also ask the Cabinet Secretary about the role of ACAS? I contacted them and the Chief Executive, Anne Sharp, said to me, and I quote, we would be pleased to meet all or any of the representative bodies, ideally face to face. While an investigation is not within our remit, we can conciliate in any dispute and carry out work to improve employment relations. I'm also struck, um, President Officer, by history repeating itself. The Francis Review, led by Sir Robert Francis QC, examined bullying in the NHS in England. Its recommendations stressed early support for whistleblowers, cultural change, prevention of isolation and containment, and legal protection for whistleblowers. And members will know that the independent national whistleblowing officer will be subject to a super affirmative SSI in the spring of 2019, which will be held by the Health and Sport Committee, of which I am a member. This is an important recommendation, notwithstanding the recommendations in the static review. It will provide new principles, standards and procedures to protect and enhance the role of whistleblowers. In conclusion, Mr. Iden Officer, this has been a timely debate, and everyone has the right to be treated with dignity and respect at work. Bullying and harassment are unacceptable and are a violation of human and legal rights. Let us look to the new year and the conclusion of the review for a new dawn where staff in NHS Highlands start afresh in safety and security as respected, dedicated professionals free from the dark cloud of bullying. Thank you. John Finney, followed by Donald Cameron. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And as is the Convention on these occasions, I'd like to thank my colleague Edward Mountain for securing this debate. Now, the member will know full well I haven't always agreed with these pronouncements uh, in relation to NHS Highland, and that's certainly the case tonight. I think there's been a conflation of ideas. So I would like to restrict myself to the wording of the motion, which I think is important. And who isn't going to condemn bullying in any shape or form? And I also will condemn the people who've stood in silence and watched that happen and the institutional arrangements that have allowed that to happen. So um, as the motion says, I also welcome the independent review and, and I, I commend John Sturrock, Jock Sturrock as he's often referred to, uh, a man of the highest calibre who, who's got a history of understanding the meaning of words and listening. And that's the important thing. So um, I think uh, the other word from the, the motion that I would like to comment on is the word promptly, because I think what's very important is we get this this matter uh, understood um, and resolved, and that should take the time it takes. So, uh, like others, like the two members who have already spoke, and indeed, um, along with Ian Blackford, uh, the MP for, for one of the MPs for the area, I attended Friday's meeting, and uh, I have to say, it, it was very harrowing to hear some of the sta statements. And I commend the people who have come forward. Now, we were all given a very large folder, uh, and that contained a lot of harrowing information. And uh, uh, I hope and indeed I'm sure that information will be made available to, to Mr. Sturrock. The dignity um, you can show anyone in a workplace is very important. In a previous career I was involved as a police federation official literally just across the road um, uh, and we discussed the introduction of equality and fairness uh, programme. Now, Police is quite a challenging environment given the, given the, the, the rank structure there and um, it would certainly seem that if it's perhaps embraced the, the philosophy of equality and fairness perhaps better than across the road. But key to that is dignity. You can have all the processes in the world, and I don't doubt that Mr. Sturrock will unearth that there's a great wealth of policies um, sitting, um, gathering dust on a shelf. Because it's my personal experience, and I won't go into casework other than to say, uh, having dealt with a particular case, it's apparent that the timescales, often the case with employment disputes, went right out the window. And that sends a very clear measure, me message to someone. If someone is too busy to deal with your issue, if someone's going to be in holiday, if someone has left the organisation, I want to understand the value, for instance, of any exit interviews that have taken place, because people have talked about uh, the loss of people, and, and uh, David Stewart's talked about the potential of recruiting uh, and retaining staff. It's important. So we need to understand the, the systems that are already in place and those that should be in place to address concerns. 
Um, I also want to, to pick out, I, I was very grateful for the Cabinet Secretary's uh, response to my colleague Gail Ross's question. I, I thought it was comprehensive in, in saying, um, and, and you know, the timing was the timing, and, and it, whenever it is, if someone's saying that they're going to create a safe space for people to come forward, then I'm very happy to commend that, and the confidentiality that's ensured with that process. There is no doubt that Mr Sturrock's an independent and impartial third party. I sought earlier in this process to, to, I made a suggestion to NHS Highland, and that was, again, back from my days where there was an instance of bullying in, in the then Northern Constabulary, I, use, using health and safety legislation as a health and safety rep, um, called in the expertise of the Institute of Occupational Med Medicine to come in and examine the workplace. Um, that was a, a, a suggestion that was noted but not taken up. By, by NHS Highlands. So I, I think it's fair to record that there have been issues over a period. Um, I, I think probably what I'm ke keenest to come out of this is that we have a safe working environment for people, but that we're not this big black cloud hanging over the NHS uh, in the Highlands. The majority of people I speak to know nothing of bullying. What they know of is the quality of care they've got, the very high standard of care they've got, and I wouldn't want anything we do or say to uh, um, impact on that. I think it's fair to say that the NHS Highland is a caring organisation. People would have imagined that care would have transferred to the well-being of their staff. Hopefully that's the case in the future. I look forward to Mr Sturrock's work, and I'm sure we'll be discussing it again in the future. Thank you. And the last of the open debate contributions is from Donald Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking my colleague Edward Mountain for not only bringing this motion forward to be discussed this evening, but also for his dogged persistence in raising the profile of this issue and, and in campaigning for the staff who are at the centre of this debate. I know I speak for many across this chamber when I say that we all appreciate everything that our NHS staff do, but nobody, Deputy Presiding Officer, nobody should fear their place of work. And the allegations that have surfaced and continue to surface are deeply alarming. The simple fact is that according to one clini clinician, the number of victims in, in, in NHS Highland who have been caught up in this particular issue could reach the thousands. That fact alone is extremely concerning. Now this issue is one which requires political consensus and I don't want to use this time either to point fingers or use it as a political football. And I welcome too the fact that an independent review was announced by the Cabinet Secretary, despite the fact that it has taken some time to get to this point. In particular, I welcome the appointment of John Sturrock QC to lead it. I happen to know him fairly well. Many years ago, he was one of the people who trained me as an advocate. And I can attest to the fact that he will bring a robust, rigorous and measured approach to this review. He also has a hugely impressive track record in mediation and I'm sure that his stewardship of this review will ensure that those who brought this issue to light and indeed those who have since come forward with their experiences can rest assured that no stone will be left unturned in this review. It's critically important that we do not turn this issue into a witch hunt or seek to prejudge the review and the allegations that have been made. But it is clear from the sheer number of complaints that have been raised that there are serious questions to be asked. And I share the concerns of others that the initial response to claims from the management of NHS Highland did appear to lack any awareness of the extent to which these problems existed. At the end of October, NHS Highland stated that they were unanimous as a board that there is no systemic culture of, of bullying. Now, I find that last statement very difficult to reconcile with the facts we now know, because what has happened since that statement and what continues to happen is that a number of clinicals and medical professionals have come forward to tell their stories that they have been too frightened to disclose. They deserve to be commended for their courage in speaking out. One of the worst stories I read in the media was the example of one employee, former employee, who contemplated suicide as a result of his experience. That story should haunt us all. The fact that someone felt so badly let down that he considered ending his own life is a stark reminder of the human cost of this situation. And I'm pleased now that the NHS chair, that the NHS Highland chair, David Alston, has welcomed this review. Deputy presiding officer, it is clear that there are many questions that need to be both asked and answered. And I hope this review is as extensive as possible. And as John Finney has just said, it reports promptly, albeit with due regard to the evidence. I'm sure it will. It is clear we need to avoid rushing to prejudge its outcome. 
But what is obvious, it seems to me, is that there has been a very serious breakdown in communication between the NHS management uh, in NHS Highland and its wider staff. And it seems that many people have felt that they cannot disclose issues for fear of retribution. And there is a deep, deep problem, it seems. And I sincerely hope this review will go some of the way towards rectifying that situation. And also that any recommendations will be looked at more broadly across the wider NHS in Scotland. Because if we don't care for NHS staff, if we don't care for our carers, then we are in serious trouble. And I hope, Deputy Presiding Officer, this day marks a turning point, not just for health provision in the Highlands, but across Scotland too. Thank you. I now call on Jean Freeman to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to uh, set out what uh, the government's position is on this matter and what we have done. Um, I, I think it is clear, as uh, has been said across this chamber, it is a sentiment that uh, I would share with uh, all the members, uh, which is to con condemn bullying and harassment in any shape or form. The bottom line is that bullying and harassment is an abuse of power. And an abuse of power is something that offends me personally and deeply. So I am concerned and was concerned about the recent allegations that amounted to, as they emerged, a bullying culture within NHS Highland. And that is why I acted to make sure that the serious issues raised could be properly dealt with. Being mindful that as those allegations emerged, there was clearly, whilst we had offered the uh, board uh, assistance in uh, listening properly uh, to what those allegations might be way back in September, uh, what was clear was that there was a need for an independent uh, review to be undertaken so that people could feel that what was being looked at and the conclusions that might be reached had a degree of credibility. What I want to understand from that review is why there are still so many staff who feel that they can't raise concerns about what is an issue that is important to them and is a, therefore a valid issue. That tells me that there is something that we need to tackle. And if there is anyone in our health service who feels bullied or harassed, we need to address it. What is clear is that whilst we have policies and procedures, it is still the case that underneath that, people feel uh, unable either to speak up or if they do speak up, then they feel that they are being closed down and those policies and procedures uh, are not working. That is partly why, in addition to the independent review, and I will uh, uh, take the time to answer the questions that have been raised by members in their contribution, but that is also why <clears throat> I have raised, as my uh, ministerial colleagues have in every annual review that we are undertaking of every health board, questions around these matters, particularly with area partnership forums, to begin to understand, even in boards where we do not have the situation uh, that we face in NHS Highland, and that is the case for the majority of our boards, uh, it is still the case that we may have situations where staff uh, feel, about 15%, I think, from the most recent survey, feel that in some way they are being bullied and harassed, but those issues are not surfacing. So we need to understand what it is, uh, what is preventing that. And in that regard, our staff side, our combination of trade unions, RCN, BMA and others, uh, are one of the ways in which we can harness some of that work. In terms of NHS Highland, as uh, members already know, on the 23rd of November, I announced that John uh, Sturrock, a QC, and Mr Cameron is, is absolutely correct, a QC of some standing, uh, some uh, significant respect in this area, uh, and indeed a highly respected mediator uh, has agreed to conduct that independent review into the allegations of a bullying culture at NHS Highland. The, the review will explore what the underlying issues are and will include conversations with any affected individuals, including current and former staff, their representatives, board members and management, and indeed including patients if patients wish uh, to come forward. And uh, my officials have had a number of conversations, my senior officials, with key stakeholders, and indeed that has helped to shape some of the scope of the review, which we discussed and agreed with Mr Sturrock. Yes, Crossy. Rhoda Grant. <coughs> Given that Mr Sturrock is um, carrying out this investigation, how and how safely can people 
divulge information for him to him because he has to have an understanding of what's happening. But at the same time, if there are people perpetrating this behaviour, that has to be dealt with. And I'm wondering how that interacts and what control people will have over where they report and what happens with the information they give. Because if they're afraid to speak out, then they may be willing to speak to Mr Sturrock, but want nothing else pursued if that is a fear. And, you know, that comes down the line then. Jean Freeman. Uh, I'm grateful uh, for that question because it is actually a very important question. There are two sets of issues here that we need to deal with. The first is for uh, Mr Sturrock, and he's already begun work um, by contacting a number of individuals and, and making his presence uh, more publicly known. Uh, for him to understand uh, all the issues and to hear from all the people who want to come forward and speak to him about their own personal experience or uh, uh, instances that they have witnessed uh, so that he can begin to form his view in uh, through that safe space for the concerns to be raised and discussed confidentially and to form his view in terms of the overall culture. What is the prevailing culture? Why are these uh, matters being raised in the way they are? Why do people not feel that they are able to pursue those? And then alongside, he will have to identify individual specific instances that need to follow uh, a different process if the individual wishes them to do that. Uh, because in any bullying culture, uh, then there are those who are bullied and those who bully. Uh, and we need to be able to address both in that. So that is why, in answer to uh, another question that Mr Mountain raised about um, <clears throat> how early in 2019 are we talking about, what I have uh, said to Mr Sturrock is that uh, I, I am looking for at least interim recommendations in early 2019, but until he begins this work, we cannot be sh absolutely certain exactly how long it will take him in its totality, uh, because we need to see what the volume of uh, individuals he should be listening to and, and taking account of are, especially if it is past as well as present. Um, but I need to know uh, and have some degree of pace around this so that if he uh, has interim recommendations, then we have those in early 2019. And in response to Mr Stewart, yes, they will be uh, public. And I would expect the Health and Sport uh, Committee in the Parliament to want to discuss those and, and indeed to want to uh, discover from me what I intend to do about them. Uh, and also pick up some of uh, Ms Grant's issues around individual cases and how those individual cases, if the individual wants to pursue it, how they might be then addressed. And until he has begun the work, then that's not something we particularly know. Presiding officer, I'm very conscious of time. If I can just cover a couple of other areas um, in terms of what was asked. Um, both uh, Mr. Stewart mentioned ACAS. Mr. Swinney also mentioned uh, the source of other, uh, 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 not Mr. Swinney, Mr. Finney. <laughs> I'm sorry to to have done that to you if you want to be responsible for education, I'm sure I'd share it with you. Um, uh, what Mr Finney asked was about other areas of expertise and that is for Mr Sturrock to determine where else he might want to seek uh, other areas of expertise to help inform the work that he is doing. And obviously, as a government, we will uh, continue to support him in that. I'm conscious of time, presiding officer, so let me just finish by, by reaffirming that I do take this matter very seriously indeed. I am looking for those interim recommendations in part in answer to Mr Cameron's point about wh where are the lessons here to be learned for our health service as a whole. Abuse of power in any form by any individual in any organisation is utterly unacceptable. And in our health service above all, which is compassionate, caring and highly professional in NHS Highland as it is elsewhere, our staff deserve to be treated in the manner we expect them to treat our patients. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and the meeting is closed.